Today, we're gonna drive three hours for a three minute meeting. What? I'm no, just kidding. Oh, I was about to say. No, this is uh, about an hour and a half. Our, it's right past KOP. It's probably like 20 minutes out of KOP. So we're gonna drive an hour and 26 minutes. This meeting's probably gonna be like 30 minutes long. And we're gonna look at a dozen rooftop units that we're gonna replace for the Coventry Mall. They're gonna range anywhere from 10 ton, 17 ton, and all the way up to 50 ton. We're probably gonna replace around six to eight 50 ton units. <clears throat> Here's the thing though, right? Nobody has any 50 ton units available. Not York, not Carrier, not Daikin. They're all made to order. They're about 48 to 50 weeks to manufacture and deliver once you pay them. Well, if you need a new unit now, you're kind of shit out of luck. So, me and my contractor, we're gonna meet there. Me and my subcontractor, we're gonna meet there. We're gonna see if we can retrofit a new curb adapter and use three 20 ton units or three 15 ton units to replace the one 50 ton unit to see if it's possible to use the current opening to be able to swap the big unit off for three smaller units because you still have the same amount of tonnage as far as the HVAC goes. So we're gonna see if we can make that happen. But our immediate job, we're replacing um, two 10 ton, one 15 ton, one 17 and a half ton unit, and then like five or six 50 ton units. It's about a million dollar job. We are here, just got off the exit. Here at the Coventry Mall. About to go on the roof and uh, place out these units to replace a shit ton of HVAC units. Get Igor in it, get Igor in it. No camera? Yes, baby. I am not a public person. <laughs> Two seconds later. What kind of model are you? Sex model. Sex model. Oh. <laughs> on the hub? Whatever it is. Three right there, bro. There's two more on the other end. So all this is what? It's yours. Right? Yeah. So we're replacing those three. Then we're replacing two over there. And then community health and dental. There's three more over there. We're replacing the top of that. Use this. And then we use that because you'll have this open space for. And then we can put another, we can do a new curb cut there. Fucking service out here in Bumblefuck. I'm gonna put up an email. 60 ton are up here. There's a 40 ton, 50 ton, 60 ton. So we're replacing one, two, three, four, five. Sort of five 50 ton or 40 and 60 ton units. So the model numbers are here. So I just matched this one. This is a 50 tonner. This is probably the same. Same. And this one's smaller. It's probably the 40 tonner. This one you should easily be able to do it because you have plenty of clearance. Correct. Right? But what about the other side? Because we do have. Uh, How old do you think this unit is? Yeah, 48. 18, yes. 2018. The grill, yeah. protect it. Because this grill does not need to stick this far out. Yeah, but kind of. You can, uh, some kind of like a just custom make a new one yeah, like a grill yeah just same grill just closer right. to the right. intake so that will help on yeah. this side yeah which gonna save us a lot on this side there is some pressure intake so it's obviously not ready for this it's like this unit is identical unit it's gonna stick out a little bit yeah but are we able to get 40 tons right now we can we can arrange something okay. but in, in in case we cannot get the 42, maybe we can split it to two points. That's what I said. Yes. So we're putting a gym right there. See, anytime fitness. From there all the way over, we're taking over big chunks of the mall. So like I'm bidding a lot of, so we're redeveloping this whole mall. So my buddy gave me a lot of the, the construction work here. So they're building apartments all along the wall. So when we build those, that's about 500 apartments we're building. So we'll put 
smaller units for all those. We're replacing a ton of HVAC units on the roof that need to be replaced. So there's a total of at least six on top of Bosco, five or six that need to be replaced, at least three or four on top of the community health and dental. And then we're redeveloping a big chunk of the mall to be storage units. This, well, this roof used to hold up cars. I understand, but I, I am not the one who, yeah. who gave this I'll bring the engineer to look at it. I have the structure. Yeah, yeah. okay, great. So, so let's take a look underneath if yeah. we can do anything with that. So yeah. we, we, we'll, we'll have a general idea how to start it. Yeah. I mean, this roof is built to hold up over 200 cars. So this, was, this used to originally be a parking lot for Boscovs. So what I would do, yeah. I would probably take this angle and put it sidewise. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what about this? These two are working, so two. those two. Right? Is these two, and I believe there's This a, is a condenser, so that's not yeah. a... No, there's a, uh, there's a 10 ton or somewhere up here. So this, this one, one, those two, those three. So 50, 50, 40, 50, 50, 10. <coughs> Maybe you're right, maybe it's not. I don't know who's living up here in 20 years. <laughs> Last thing we need is that big fucking crane coming up here. <laughs> <laughs> but the beauty is the parking lot is right next to other units. You got one over here, you can park over there, and you can park over there. This unit, worst case scenario, they used to drive up this ramp and park here. That's how busy Boscov was. That that fucking big parking lot was not enough. Yep. If they are available, not available, let's see what the deal is. We can expedite it or whatever it is. So, so you want this done also right away? Right away. So these is right away. I mean, they're all right away. Okay. So now it's just a matter of us getting the structural engineer to make sure that if we put three smaller units, it's right. good. More than likely it will be because it's built for fucking cars to be on the roof. But better safe than sorry, right? This is correct. And then uh, the set up time early next week to go look at the warehouse. Uh, you said cinnamon? Yeah. So listen, I need these 2010 units like tomorrow. So call whoever you got to call. Okay. Well, more like 30, 30 of them because let's say we replace them up here. That's another eight units. Yeah. You know what I mean? So give or take, let's say at least 30, 2010 units. If you stay hungry, you'll never go hungry. I was, we were just heading home. But I asked my boy Chris because we're about to install 20, 20 ton units on his new factory. I asked him what kind of condition his roof's in. And he said the roof's being replaced. I said, cool. When can I look at it? I want to bid that job too. He's like, oh, you tell me. I said, I'll go there right now. We're driving there right now. Oh, this is him. What's up, bro? What up, buddy? On my Listen, way. Yeah. You're going to go, but you're going to meet with Tim. Tim okay. and Ali. Okay. Uh, go look. Go look at everything. I can't come over that way, dude. I just left there like an hour ago and came over to Berlin. Okay. I was gonna drive back, but Tim's like he's there. All right. It's fine. I'll be there in 21 minutes. All right. All right. All right let me talk to Tim later. You know what's crazy? There's motherfuckers out here that really work like they're rich. What I mean by that is they literally work nine to five. They go home and chill rest of the day, and then on the weekends they just take the time off. I work like I'm fucking poor. I work like I'm broke. And that's the surest way to never go broke. Again. Well, the richest ones will always tell you they're poor. Okay, yeah, that's right. There's spots where we need to fix, we know that. There's a section, this one, because there was big, big huge chimneys coming up and I knocked yeah. the chimneys out. Plus, whatever we see right now, it's a wide open canopy, so we see any drips. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're saying one set of units sitting on this fucking thing, and then the next set of units sitting in that. What the hell? Like an engineer, they put in that I needed, you know, like eight gauge steel for my non load bearing walls. And I'm like, why am I putting in such high gauge steel for non load bearing walls? They're like, I'm like, can I do a lower gauge? They're like, well, yeah. I'm like, well, why the fuck would I? do a higher gauge if there's no no mm. load yeah he's like well that's just typically what's standard i'm like yeah but it's also like fifty thousand dollars more but they're not going to build for you what's the the cheapest for you they're going to just put together whatever the fuck they want yeah every time because they're also doing damage on the roof yeah. so then i gotta get a crane because who's going to be lifting at you or i'm going to be dropping it into the ground and did that, 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 that and 
I just want to. Don't unlike do that last shit. Time. Unlike Don't last do that time. shit like last time. Unlike, you didn't listen to me. Listen, unlike last time, you I got listen? money. Yeah, okay. If you listen last to me time, like last time, we did it with little, little change and things that we can squ scratch it together. Now we're properly funded, but we also have enough time to build a facility. So when we build them, we get a year rent free to build it out. So uh, we're about to finish construction, our free rents up, but also we got sweetheart deals. Like there, I got 30,000 feet in prime real estate and paying 12 grand a month. You can't fucking beat it. You know what I mean? For 30,000 square feet yeah. in South uh, Philly on Oregon Avenue, I got 10 year, two, five right, year near options. Oregon, near Oregon Diner? Where? Yeah, it's like where? five minutes from there. It's right across from Home Depot. You know what I mean? And then over here, uh, Fearless Hills, we got 75,000 square feet and paying 39,000 a month. And I had a year and a half rent free. Can't beat it. And then, mean, then you have the cash to build it out. So you don't, you're yeah. not, and you're bu we're building them. Like and you're not nothing you've never bank. seen, you know. And then we we make money within a few months of opening. Like Fearless Hills, we broke even. Probably within 60 days of opening, we signed up over 1,500 members. Our break even is 1,050 members. And we lose 80 to 90 members, but we'll sign up like 220. So we had a net growth of about 120 a month. That's so a almost 1440 a month. What's the reason that you're losing the numbers? Yeah, uh, people, people move, lose. they don't actually work out, but we're signing up more than we they ever lose. lose. Jobs. They and there are months where we do a, a lot of sign-ups. We'll do four or five hundred if we run a promo. Right? But we are like a premium brand right now, so we don't really run a lot of sales. So, But when we do run a sale, we sign up 500 people. You know what I mean? Five, six hundred people. When we lose 70, 80, you're signing up four or five hundred. Let's sell it at four or five hundred. You have a net loss of 15%. After the promo that they don't pay, you know what I mean. But you're net three, three, four hundred members in a single month. Even at a net growth of a thousand a year, we're growing at seven hundred thousand dollars in net income year over year over year. That's the bottom line. Yeah. You know, he was trying to expand too fast when he was younger. I told no, him. it wasn't he the wasn't expansion. Li it was he wasn't listening. It wasn't, we weren't charging enough. Yes, he was doing the five dollars. How much was and, it? And I didn't $10. have any, And I didn't have any fucking money. <laughs> How much was it? Ten dollars. Was it ten dollars? Five dollars. That's right. Five dollars. I said, bro, what the fuck? Five dollars? He's like, dude, I'm gonna get a million what, members. What do they call it? The other ones? Uh, Planet. Planet. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh my god. About ten dollars a month. Yeah, there, right? The biggest problem before we weren't charging enough, and you know I was doing it out of the money that I had, which was very little. You know what I mean? So now we get funded for every location we build, and literally nothing like you've ever seen you gotta see it yeah. some fire ass kicks maybe he'll get one so what's up with this store than any other store it's probably down here. they just sell like high-end sneakers they're resellers so back in the day i used to work at one of these little kiosks at the mall from the time i was about 11 years old until i was 18 i worked at the mall and i used to get paid 20 bucks a day and if I didn't work at the mall, I wouldn't be the man that I am today. And the reason being is it taught me grit, it taught me discipline, it taught me hard work. I used to work for our family business, so they didn't really pay me shit, but they paid me with experience. So a lot of times when you're putting in time and energy, you're not getting paid what you want, you just know you're getting paid in knowledge and experience. And you can take that shit and you can get a much greater return on investment of your time than a small paycheck. I went from working in the mall to now we're buying up malls. First time I ever decided to buy crypto, was sitting right over there, right there. When I was Lucas's age, every mall used to be booming like this. Every weekend, it was a place to be. So what do you think like the malls will be like when Lucas is like your age? I think the malls that invest in, in technology, that invest in its infrastructure, that invest in an experience, and the people will be the mall still not just surviving, but they're gonna be thriving. If they can combine online with brick and mortar, they'll be unstoppable. I mean, you, I mean, you're kind of seeing that with Amazon now, with a lot of the Amazon stores, they're combining online with brick and mortar, and they're kind of giving you a little bit of both worlds. But that applies to any business. You know, if you invest in the future, you have a future. So that's the world's most expensive uh, handbags in Hermes. How much do you think one bag goes for? It depends. 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars. It's a fucking car. Yeah. So what are you buying Tony today? Uh, I've already bought him every single thing that he owns, so. What? I said, what are you buying Tony today? He bought me, uh, he bought me five gun safes last year for Christmas. Did you really? Okay. No. Yeah. Um, remember? I don't remember that. Yeah. 
You asked me what I wanted. I said I want some gun safes for all my handguns throughout the house. I think you uh, came out of your lounge. Tony got us lost. Yeah. Where we at? I don't know. Where we going, man? I don't know, man. You think we're getting closer? Maybe. Just ask somebody. Man, we are men. Men don't do that shit. We talked about it. So. Right there. Where? Yeah. Mark's there. So look. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Bro, I don't look. You walk by like five times, man. What? You walk back and forth like five First times. First of all, we only walk this way one time, okay? Don't be lying. I don't think they know where they're going at all. We're going the wrong way. You guys lost? No. Did, did you guys find a no, story no, yet? We just don't know where we're going. What pair are you trying to get? Black Phantoms. These ones. The corniest ones they have. That's not true. Not true. Yeah, I'll get the, I'll get the Black Air Forces. Yeah, I'll have they're, the Black Air Forces. They're Air Forces. I'll, I'll have the Black Air Forces. <laughs> they're not Air Forces. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I've been following you for a while. Thank you, thank you. I love seeing that. Thank you. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Where from? Uh, from uh, down in Delaware. Okay. I grew up in uh, Avondale area, like West Grove. So, cool. yeah, I just yeah. started uh, my business about two, two years ago. So it's, so it's been cool to see like your full journey. Yeah, we're trying to capture it. There. We're capturing it right uh, now. We're trying yeah. to like, get to, uh, what, 10 or a billion dollar company here? Yeah. That's up. When, when did you start Fusion? We started Fusion 2014. Yes, yeah, so we're going on. It was just our nine-year anniversary two weeks ago. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I haven't been to one of your gyms yet. Cause it's come by, bro. It's not yeah. around where I'm at. But yeah. yeah. So, so well, well, I guess like with me. So I'm, I'm in, I've been in business for about almost two years now. Yeah. And I'm trying to like get to that seven figure mark. Yeah. What What was like the, what business like, the biggest? Uh, so I do. Uh, I'm a videographer and yeah. also photographer as well. Okay. So, so primarily in uh, real estate. Okay. Right now, real estate with builders and stuff like that. So how do you get most of your clients now? Uh, online and just like through like referrals. Okay. Have so, you ever reached out to any like big brokers and offered to do free work for them? Uh, no, I don't do it. I don't do free work. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> again, so, but, so I mean, that's how I do, that's how I've been able to get into, uh, through a lot of doors because I mean, people, they don't want to pay to see if your work is good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because when you're in business for yourself, you're working all day long yeah. anyway. You know what I mean? Like, so most photographers will also not do work for free. Yeah. But you gotta be able to do what other people don't do to get the profits and money and clients that other people don't get. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, you either pay for marketing or you become the marketing. Yeah. The easiest way to become the marketing, I mean, that's how me and Corey met. Corey's yeah. now my full-time vlogger. Yeah. But how, he reached out, he saw us, what we were doing through Fusion. I already had a videographer, but Corey's like, hey, maybe we can do long form content. Well, what areas are you missing? But that's how he reached out to me and that's how we like, that's how we initially met. And then now he was able to quit his full-time job and now we're working together consistently. But what I would do if I were you, I'm not telling you what yeah. to do, but this is what I would do. Yeah. Is I would reach out to like the top brokers in the neighborhoods that you work in. And just be like, hey, listen, my name's so-and-so, this is what I do. I would love to give you some sample of my work absolutely for free. What is a property you're having a hard time selling right now? But what is one of your newest properties? Yeah. And then go and shoot some content. But it's gonna take maybe an hour of your time, yeah. another hour of editing. Yeah. But now, I'm not saying do it for agents, do it for brokers, because brokers have other yeah. agents yeah. that work underneath yeah. them. Yeah, yeah that, and, that's what I've been looking for. Like that's how I like kind of structure mine is going after more like brokers yeah. and stuff like that. So Yeah, but the biggest thing is that like a lot of people they're not willing to to pay the price with their time because when you don't have a big name for yourself, you're gonna have to do a lot of shit that most people aren't willing to do, right? Yeah. So your biggest thing is like you have a lot of free time. Unless you're booked up 24 hours a day. Yeah, I mean, that's how it is. Yeah. So I just hired two of my first employees two months ago. Right. So now it's like, now it's just like gotta keep that, rinse and repeat and stuff like that. You gotta that, keep so. their schedules full because you're paying yeah. them their own payroll. Yeah. So the biggest thing is like, you already have the team. Now just fill their books because you're gonna pay them regardless, right? Yeah. So, but the biggest thing is like, you gotta take a step back in order for you to make a leap forward. 
How are you going to take a step back? Is bro, put your ego to the side, call the biggest brokers, introduce yourself like, look, my work is better than everyone else's. This is my passion, it's what I do. I would love to do a house for you for free. It's going to take you maybe an hour or two of your time. And then you do that over and over, what's going to happen is, when he now needs a house done, he remembers your work. Yeah. You're gonna be the guy, even if there's like five photographers that reached out, you'll be the one that sticks out. Yeah. You'll be the guy that he calls. Okay. But that's, so, that'll be one of the easiest way to get in front of the right people. Yeah, sure. with, with the business that, that you built, yeah. what was, I guess, if you could go back, or, or something that you wish that you knew when you were like in like year three, like, like things started, like the ball started rolling. Yeah. Is there something that you, that you would've done different or? There's nothing that I would've done different because, I mean, there's two ways you can learn things, right? You can learn it organically, you can learn it through your own process like you're going through right now, or you can learn it synthetically with those that came before you. It's the same principles, just in a different field. So like, my, before I ever had a gym, I had a personal training business. Gotcha. But no one was willing to pay 60, 70 dollars for an hour session. Yeah. So I had to show them the value of working with a trainer. So I would go up to everyone at the gym. I would introduce myself. I said, my name's Tony, I'm one of the head trainers here. Listen, what are you working on today? They all say they were working on this, that, and the third. I'd get to know them. And I'm like, hey, listen, do you mind if I give you some free tips? Like, oh yeah, no problem. I would turn that free tip into a free session. After I did a free session, 70, 80% of the time, they would buy personal training from me. But I would go out there and get the business. I would take the business. I wasn't waiting for the business to come to me. Gotcha. Especially when you have a team, bro, you have, it's not like you're doing it by yourself. You have other people that work underneath you. So you have consistent payroll that you have to make. You have expenses you have to cover. Yeah. So, but those are X amount of hours that they're also working. So no one's telling you, you to go do the work. You can send one of your guys to do the work and do it where you have a gap. Yep. And that's what I would do. Cool, cool, I appreciate it. Yeah. Hi, bro. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure meeting you. Appreciate your time, for yeah, sure. No problem, Is this, uh, do you do all the edits and stuff like that that yeah. I see for, um, for Instagram? Yeah. Well, this is or, a little bit of YouTube. it. This yeah. We also YouTube. convert this to like short form. Nice. Yeah. Your edits are so fire. Adam does, yeah, Adam does the short form. Corey just started about a week ago, so he does the long form. Nice. Yeah. That's what's up. What do you shoot on? Uh, 874, nice. 24 to 70. That's what's up. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, Keep it up. Yes, sir. I love seeing the bro. journey. All right. Good luck. <laughs> do those free shots. You see, the thing is, a lot of people, they're not willing to put in the work. They like, go, oh, I don't do free work. How are you going to get in front of other people? There's tons of photographers out here that reach out to us all the time. The reason we hired Corey, Corey came out, we linked up, he wanted to do some free work, and now he does it full time. To know why there's two different Santas. Probably his first time seeing it. You never seen a black Santa? No. 